Welcome to continued Mug Club Quarantine Month. That's the hashtag. And of course, you can enter in the promo code quarantine. You get $30 off at ladderwithcredit.com slash mug club. Uh, we've decided to try and serve you as best we can since we're not first responders. We can create more content than ever and put all of the content that's usually available exclusively to mug clubbers in front of the paywall so that you don't feel so lonely during this month. You can go to ladderwithcredit.com slash schedule uh, to see all of our live broadcasts when we'll be doing live chat. And what you're about to watch is actually something we do every uh, every couple of weeks, Mass Monday, where we'll take on sort of a topical but also theological issue and deal with it from a biblical perspective. Full disclosure, most of us here are Christians. Uh, and um, let us know uh, what you think about these kinds of programs. And if you'd like to see more of this on YouTube, as it's uh, usually available exclusively at Mug Club right now. And if you are a member, please do renew, because we make uh, zero of the Benjamins from YouTube. If we were to count on them to make it rain, there wouldn't be any rain. All right, that's not really a dance in. No, uh, no. I mean, for people, of course, uh, those of you watching uh, on the YouTube, we have the free Mug Club month going on. Of course, the promo Boom. code is quarantine. If you yeah. join up at ladofcutter.com slash mug club, you get this stuff uh, every week. That's awesome. Every day of every yeah. week. Morning show right now is special for the quarantine, obviously. It is, for everybody. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't want to be doing two a days for the rest of my life. Who am I? Terrell Owens? <laughs> no. I'm not, the, I'm not your rubber band man. Did you know that? He was known as rubber band man. Really? Yeah. No, Why is that? Because he used rubber bands. So, um, uh, okay. this for people who do not know, that's all I know. I, I saw an advertisement for Body Elastics and they said, meet Terrell Owens, the rubber band man. And they came uh. in and said, I am the rubber band man. <laughs> and did he, did he Body Elastics. Songs? Why, that was it. Okay. And I bought them. Wow! Thank well, you. Yeah, yeah, and right I gave them to a housekeeper. Not my, not my housekeeper. I can't afford a housekeeper. Somebody but else's. I gave the Terrell Owens endorsed body elastic bands hmm. to a housekeeper of others' houses, houses, homes. Speaking wow. of which, I should probably <laughs> clean up my own house first and get an order. That's what we we do this often. I think every other Monday. It's been typically a mass yeah, Monday. We've talked like about that, horror yeah. films in the past. Uh, taking on some issues, you know, as everyone uh, here is a Christian. Um, some people come from different denominations, different walks. Uh, if you don't like it. I get it. You're a 2007 YouTube atheist. You just read Hitchens. Yeah, right. I get it. Flying Super spaghetti monster. You're so interesting. <laughs> but this is... Um, was that Hitchens or was it Dawkins? I don't remember the uh, yeah, flying spaghetti monster. I don't know why I say monster. Like it's Herman spaghetti monster. <laughs> it's not Herman. That's but, for sure. Um, <laughs> this week, actually, we do want to talk about some of this because it's been making the rounds on, on yeah, YouTube throughout yeah. the whole sort of YouTube blogosphere. And you brought this to my attention, yes. Audio Wade. Yeah. Let yeah, people kind of, You said, hey, I would like to maybe do a podcast yourself right. on Explain. Yeah, so the, the Retin Link. Uh, Famous on YouTube, I think they have like yep. 16 million subscribers. Right. Recently came out, did a couple of, of videos call about their spiritual deconstruction. Is the word that that's they, the new term they've used? Yes, yeah. it's the woke term. It's very cool. Very, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. very cool. So, cool. so, so yeah, they did a couple of episodes on that. Each one about an hour and 45 minutes, just going through their stories of basically how they lost their faith. Right. Um, and they came from very different points of view on that. But yeah, that, that's uh, and I, I I thought that warranted at least. A response. Well, I think it warranted a response because, and I want to be really clear, as a Christian, obviously, we want to speak to these people, uh, er everyone who's in this boat, out of love, compassion, we care, of oh, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Christians, we all believe um, that our worldview is correct, and it, namely because we also want what's best for people. And obviously, creating distance between yourself and God, we don't view as being best for you. No, he doesn't need the coronavirus. Life. He does not no, need no, the social not, distancing. Now, <laughs> that being said, um, I also think, based on what we've, and we'll get to some clips here, based on what we've uh, been watching, um, that sometimes these people also need to be intellectually challenged, not emotionally coddled. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's pretty that's important here. Yeah. Yeah. And there were a lot of questions that were sort of asked that weren't really answered. And this is a big thing that you see the term deconstruction. That's sort of the terminology that's used a yeah. lot now yeah. from these uh, really sort of the, the like freedom from religion foundation. I don't know if they mm -hmm. use it exactly, but yeah. a lot of these places. Right. So just someone leaving the faith. Yeah. Um, so let's set up the context before we get into some of these arguments. And I want to, by the way, hear from everyone out there, since this isn't uh, uh, you know only a mug club right now, we're doing a live chat. We've been doing live chats all week. But yeah. uh, in the comment section, let us know if you've ever had a crisis of faith or um, how you maintain faith or what your worldview is as a Christian. Because sometimes it, it sometimes I just go, oh, 
that's a different perspective. And then sometimes it dumbfounds me. Where someone's like, right. well, I'm a, I'm a yeah. Christian, but I uh, sacrifice goats in the Temple of the Dead. I'm like, well, ah, it's a little well, okay. It's that's a bit fun. of a niche. They're just Swedish. <laughs> it's confusing. Oh. Swedish. Uh, it's a very yeah. weird place. Do they do right. anything? It's a very, very weird yeah. place. So uh, before we continue, and yeah, this might be uh, a, a little bit, nah, I don't want to say scholarly. There'll still be dick jokes, but <laughs> let's go for context to Rhett one. and Link explaining it off the bat why they left the Christian faith. This is when I adopted what I'm going to call California Christianity. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> to get at what Link was getting at here a second ago. Man bun. Uh, in <laughs> L.A., important note. E- even it within is. the evangelical church, I think there is this sort of, because you're in this incredibly diverse place with so many different perspectives, you really can't maintain a Christian faith in a place like this without at least some sort of realization that there's a lot of gray. Mm. Uh, it's not about having it all figured out. It's not about being completely certain. It's about a relationship with Jesus. At this point, I was like, okay, you know what? Who? I think this is probably where faith comes in. You know, it, it, it makes sense to me that this might be where faith comes in because um, I... It, I am sitting here trying to prove this stuff out, but shouldn't I just have faith first? And then maybe these answers will be given to me by God. Uh, isn't this what faith is all about? I mean, the whole point is it's, it's evidence of things not seen. And this is where LA comes into play. Something about um, seeking knowledge. LA did allow me to ask a new question. It's almost like it's an expectation of us. And that was, of why am I still doing this? <laughs> Could be in the Bible. And I'll be we'll honest, see. I would not have asked that question if I was in North Carolina. You know, we were working out of this little basement studio uh, and just putting stuff on the internet. And once we started to actually, our world got bigger when we started to meet other creators. Um, I remember when we met That's something we'll come Michael back Buckley the first time, he gave me a hug. And I remember thinking, I th- this is the first openly gay person I've ever hugged. Oh, and wow. I don't yeah. know what, I know what I'm supposed to believe about this guy that I'm hugging, but this, but, mm-hmm. and it was a crisis moment mm-hmm. for me because I was Jesus like. Because Jesus would just face palm them. That's yeah, true. Get out the way. No hugs. feel right. For, for me, and let me clarify, it didn't feel right for, feel. Me, for me to, to render judgment of him because what I wanted to do was hug him back and actually mean it. But mm-hmm. there was, I was, I had been, the belief that I was ingrained with didn't allow me to. Sounds like wrong uh, beliefs. Ingrained. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to sincerely hug the guy. And I was, it was upsetting. Yeah, and that must have been really hard. <laughs> okay, yeah. so a couple of things that need yeah. to. It, I uh, want to yeah. say this as a jumping off point, and this is with a lot of Christians, and by the way, no surprise here, they try and cut it off at the past that people who come from small rural areas, or from right. small Christian towns, go to California or start working in the entertainment industry, and they say, I know people are going to say, you went to California and became a sort of a liberal, woke liberal, or whatever they say, like yeah, big right, surprise, yeah. but that's not what happened. No, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> you basically said that I you had never had like any personal experience with someone yeah. uh, of a differing viewpoint or differing lifestyle, Michael Buckley, he was a guy who used to do the show, what the fuck? Do you remember it used to be, what the fuck? That was his, his like original, oh, yeah. it was like tabloid stuff. Like he wasn't yeah, even a particularly gosh, nice annoying. gay guy. It was yeah. a very bitchy gay show. Like, <laughs> oh my God, Chris Hemsworth needs to do some push-ups. What the fuck? Go back. That was his catchphrase. He just do every single time he'd say, what the fuck? But you should still, I'm already hug, annoyed. Him. You should still hug him uh, lovingly. As a matter of fact, it would yeah. be more yeah, unchristian of you to can. not be able to hug this person right. and yeah. mean it. And so this is important because this is often used. And I, and I understand that everyone has their own sort of journey or people talk about it this way. But listen, you cannot say that you had to abandon your faith because of what the faith teaches or what the Bible right. teaches or what Christ teaches because you had ingrained in you something that was not at all mm-hmm. biblically correct. This is really easy. Go to scripture. Right. Does scripture at any point tell you, and, and this is also used, by the way, as a jumping off point where they say, well, we know there are some decent Christians out there who are pro-LGBTQAAIP, by the way. I noticed they didn't use the full uh, yeah, acronym. Yeah, right. um, Just not woke, shame. Why, that's, not that's, woke that's, enough. <laughs> but the, what the insinuation there is that anyone who is a Christian who believes in the fundamental roles of men and women in a marriage and a nuclear family uh, must hate gay people. Yeah. No, right. no, no. Just yeah. like you can hug someone who is promiscuous, which as Christians we don't agree with, and love yeah, them. Yeah, or material, materialistic, what would or a liar. Think? Jesus or is gonna be, Get out of the way, Michael Buckley, you and your what the buck catchphrases. 
<laughs> not in my house of worship. Like this yeah, is just, no. yeah. you <laughs> were taught happen. wrong or you believed wrong and yeah. you had false guilt. There's nothing in the Bible that would say you should feel guilty or repulsed by hugging a gay man out of love. And yeah. that is not the reason for, it shouldn't be the reason for a conversion. No, and I think that's a great point to make is that when we talk about Islam, we don't talk about somebody's teaching on Islam. We talk about the book, right? And so there's a lot of people that are going to have- someone's teaching. Well, we don't, we don't pick like a random Muhammad. thing. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We, we judge these faiths by uh, the, the text that they say that they go by. Sometimes you're going to have a, a misinterpretation of that and somebody's going to go off and form a religion that believes if you can survive a snake bite, you're truly holy and, and mm. that's the religion that we're going to have. And so we're not going to, we're not going to put them out and say, well, that's Christianity and we're going to judge that. Well, I was like, we're we going to that one scripturally based. Doesn't the Bible say something about not testing me? Wouldn't, well, it, Lord, you know, if you are true, you will protect me from this snake bite. Well, it's in the scriptures. He's, it's he's in like, the instructional like, booklet. Don't, he's don't, saying don't. he won't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, I want to make sure that we're being fair, but also yeah. for, the, for the people out there that are watching this, even if you're an atheist and you have, you have no faith whatsoever, um, we'd love to hear why maybe you don't have a faith. Maybe you've done some research and you just don't want to. But with these guys, what they're doing is they're putting out stories about their journey through this process. Their personal experiences. Yeah, their personal experiences. And, and I think they're bringing up points that are very very easily challenged. Again, we're, we're approaching it with love and we understand that people have crisis of faith and so we're not beating them over the head saying, you're wrong, you're wrong, how no, dare no. you? We're just Everyone's talking about what they here. are saying to everybody else. There's a, there's a lot of feel, there's a lot of touchiness to it, there's yeah. a lot of slow storytelling that kind of draws you in and yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. That's a personal story for those guys. But, right. but it's very short on, let's dive into these issues on these podcasts at the very least. Well, my, my main point here is if you convert from a religion, from a faith, because you don't agree with what is prescribed in that faith, um, right. well then you better be sure that it's what is prescribed. And yeah. not hugging gay, hug guys gay guys is not in there. Yes. <laughs> Do you realize I've worked yeah, in the entertainment industry since I was since I was 11 years old on the set of Arthur and I was yeah. doing voice work behind the scenes. I was taking sips. It was just it was ba almost my takes of doing voiceovers were between huggings of gay guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're all everywhere. But I think that's also yeah. the danger of of, yeah. of yeah, keeping young Christians very sheltered and not yeah. allowing them to be challenged right. at a young age. Yeah. So what I see is yeah, like you're talking about the the, the personal experience yeah. uh, trumping. All when we're talking about when we're talking about issues of faith, and yeah, and it yeah. doesn't all come down to personal experience. Yeah. And whether they realize that or not, that is part of the California Christianity. Right. Yeah. That, right. They, that they have said that they're they, being sheltered in a different way now. Yeah. So right. they moved away from North Carolina, where they said that they felt sheltered in some way. But yeah, they they are very insulated there. They're also very insulated yeah. in California. It's it's just different people insulating them. Right. With different beliefs. Yeah. No. And I think that's important uh, to note because this also can be indicative of someone who becomes a byproduct of their environment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because Absolutely. I've known people, for example, I did not fit in at my youth group when I was young or really? any of the churches. I did really? not. I didn't fit in when I went to public school, which was Catholic school in Montreal. I didn't uh, fit yeah. in with the uh, youth group. There was a Pentecostal youth group at one point, and that was a whole different thing. That was the only, that was the only church within a five-mile radius of me at that point. Yeah. And then, of course, I didn't fit in with people in the entertainment industry. So just, just because you feel like you don't fit in somewhere or people might disagree with you in Hollywood yeah. doesn't mean that you fundamentally abandon your principles. Right, so right, I think yeah. we do need to get a little bit more into why it is that they had these doubts or uh, what the reasons would be. If there is any reasoning as opposed to feelings, yeah. uh, I think that's yeah. the next clip we have, correct? Yeah, well, they, they, they talk mostly about those reasons during the, the first 45 minutes or so of the interview. And it's, and it's mostly just sort of quoting experts or quoting books that Rhett said he mm -hmm. read. Uh, it, you know, and for every single one of those, you could find some PhD who says the exact opposite. So really, right. really the issue is not any particular evidence or piece of evidence. It's obvious that a lot of this has to do with prestige or at least at some level some amount of respect he right. opens it he opens the his portion of the podcast with saying i want people to like me hmm. like right off the bat he says that that's part yeah, of his he personality kind of admits that about himself didn't, yeah. right? didn't, yeah. didn't jesus know they, they hated me first yeah. they're probably, they're, they're yeah. probably they gonna hate, hate you I'm, I'm rusty on my scripture <laughs> yes yeah they hate us if that's they so hated what we me they will hate yeah. you and by the way that's not road. an excuse for you to for no. example steal from people's clearly labeled drawers in the office refrigerator no. and then if i'm mad say like well they hated jesus first that's not the same thing no, here i'm sorry no, no, no. i want to be very clear yeah i know it's clearly mark i shouldn't use my middle name to be well because you didn't know my middle name let alone just B with a yeah, period, yeah. Uh, but um, <laughs> yeah. I, so I want to be clear, if, uh, and I do encourage everyone to go and and, and listen to the show, listen yeah. to their reasoning. But like you said, it's not really any one piece of evidence. Yeah. It really does come down to the uh, word experiential. Yeah, very yeah. much yeah. so. And, and there's you know there's something that we saw in there um, that he said that we 
we found out that there was a lot of gray when we moved to California. And I, I'm very puzzled by what he means by gray. There shouldn't um, be new gray. There is gray, but there shouldn't be new gray based on geography. Well, <laughs> there yeah, should yeah. be. Right. Maybe yeah. you've yeah, taken exactly, a different yeah. approach to gray, and your faith right. shouldn't change. But the truth no. is, Christianity doesn't. Almost the reason for religion, the reason for faith, is to often deal with the gray. Yeah. Right. And so we, we talk about this. There, the Bible does have. You know, I've said this a lot to you guys in our offline conversations. We should be as we should be firm where the Bible is firm, and we should hold it loosely where the Bible holds yep. it loosely. Right. We should make sure that we're not firm on things that the Bible is not. And then the opposite. If the Bible's loose on it, we shouldn't be firm. And so there right. are places where specifically he ends up talking about the LGBTQ plus community. And that's how he says it. Um, and he's saying, you know, th this is one of those things. And I'm like, well, the Bible is not gray here. The Bible has never been gray right. about what yeah. sin is and is not. Right. right? It's right. very clear on that. Otherwise, it would be we serve a very capricious God who can kind of change his mind whenever he wants to on what sin would be. But how you treat those people is also not gray. And right. those people is right. me as a sinner yeah, as well. Like how treat, we all treat, treat each other. Love. That's not gray, yeah, right? Yeah. You treat each other with love, uh, just like your, your brother is your neighbor and your neighbor is your brother. It's like everybody yeah. is that close together. And that's very, very easy to see. So I'm wondering... What gray are you talking about? Because yeah. that was the one thing that you brought well, up that more was so big. What and I'm thinking California. What so. sudden gray? What sudden gray? What change? Kind of like I said right. with Mitt Nothing. Romney, where Mitt Romney went from being pro-choice, his whole yeah. political career, to then pro-life. But I was going, hold on a second. What changed? Because you yeah. were always a Mormon. You always claimed that your right. your religion yeah. uh, was what determined, right? Is what I I educated yeah. your politics. So then what changed? It's not like you were saying, well, I was a secularist and then I learned, you know, I, I, someone right. came knocking on my door, off, got off his bicycle with a helmet and short middle management shirt and a tie and <laughs> brought me the Book of Mormon. Yeah. And then I said, I'm pro-life. Yeah. No, no. What changed? And right. so for me, it's what changed where all of a sudden there's this gray. And if what you would use as an example is, well, now it was gray because I had to hug a gay guy and I felt like I, I should be uh, repelled by him. Well, that's not gray. That's your own issue. And I think yeah. the danger here is right. applying your own hangups and your own issues and offering that as any sort of prescriptive advice mm, yeah. to yeah. people out there who may be struggling with their faith because that is not gray. Yeah. yeah. That's Absolutely. a lot of, uh, of the reasons that I of personal people that I've seen leave the faith or say that they're atheists is that they say all these things like people are hypocrites and they're liars and they do these things that are in the inside of the Christian faith and you're, you're talking about people right yeah. you're not talking about the faith you're not talking about Jesus you're talking about the people that are inside and we sure. know that they're that way yeah. right so yeah yeah okay well let's uh, let's go here we have another clip to get yeah, to yeah. and uh, yeah. then we'll come back and sort of dissect this a little bit more I understand that it is unreasonable to expect Christianity to be a set of scientifically verifiable principles. It is a faith, implying that some sort of believing without seeing is involved. And more specifically, Christianity is a relationship with Jesus, and relationships are not well-defined or experienced scientifically. However, I don't think it insignificant that the deeper I have dug into Christianity with a thirst for the truth, the more difficult it has become to have faith. In fact, for me, it has become impossible. And that was kind of the reckoning for me. When I jumped ship, I didn't jump to another boat. I jumped into the water and I pulled my wife and my children in with me. Again, I wanna yeah. know, we started digging and you started seeking for the truth and they talk about how the conversion happened after yeah. they moved. So they try to cut yeah. off of the past again, like, not because of California. Why did you only start digging for the truth once you moved to California? Yeah. Hmm. Why weren't you digging for the truth when you were in North Carolina, when you were surrounded by Christians, when you, by your own admission, led a men's Bible study? Yeah. Were you, was, were you lying to them? Because I would yeah. obviously assume that someone in a leadership position of a Bible study is seeking truth. And yeah. I think they could be wording it improperly, yeah, but a lot of this say, is designed to discredit everything they believed before as though yeah. they were never seeking truth. No, no, no. You had a different opinion that was formed often. I can't necessarily say this with certainty because of your environment. Yeah. He did say at some point whenever he was leading that, he was like trying to, he had all these questions and he was trying to look to to uh, knowledgeable books and, and stuff yeah. like that. So he did have like questions about it, right. but yeah, like you're right. He didn't really jump ship until- Well, we all have questions wrong. about it. Yeah, well, I'd be all lying did. if I were to say that, that I don't have doubts in my faith. That's right. yeah. why it's a struggle. That's why almost the, almost the entirety of the Bible is designed to at least help you with answers yeah. Yeah. and your struggle with, with doubts. Right, yeah. and, and, and the environment also includes the books you're reading. 
Right. Yeah. So yeah. those those are things that you're putting in your life. It's the choices that you're making and the things that you're surrounding yourself with. So you can surround yourself with books that are saying the one thing. You can surround yourself with th things that are bolstering your faith as well as challenging your faith. I would recommend both. Right. Yeah. Well, so he said something about science, and this is something that we talked about just a little bit. Um, but he, he said the deeper I dug into science, the more I couldn't kind of buy my faith, so to speak. Right. I'm paraphrasing kind of what, what he was trying to say there. And, uh, you know, some people will make some some pretty easy mistakes when they look at the Bible. They'll they'll make the Bible out to be uh, a science book when the Bible never claims to be a science book, right. right? And it doesn't discredit what the Bible says about scientific matters if it does address sure. them, right? Um, but it's basically saying like, look guys, this is not like cellular biology. This isn't freshman yeah. bio 101 that we're trying to accomplish here. We're trying to, God has obviously chosen stuff to communicate to us that he feels is very important. Uh, but Wade, you and I were talking about yeah. this and, and really the crux is there are wonderful like pillars of the faith that have, that have different opinions on some of the science right discussions that yeah. happen within scripture. Sure. But I, I had a question. Uh, my church has something called great questions and people can come in and ask any question. It can be atheists. It can be people who seek, uh, you know, to have a deeper relationship, people who are on the fence, like whatever it may be. We've had everybody come in and this person asked me, they said, you know, I, I, I don't believe in evolution. Can I still, or I do believe, sorry, in evolution, right? So they believed in evolution, scientifically taught. Can I still be a Christian? And I, it just, it floored me. And I, I had this response to it and I, I had it again when you and I started talking about it before mm -hmm. the show, like I, I wanted to kill this question and there was a reason for it. And I understand that it sounds like it's over the top, but I said, look, when you get to heaven, right? And you're standing before God, do you think he is going to say, did I do it in six days? I don't think that that's where you yeah. start. It doesn't mean that that right. question isn't yeah, something yeah, that we can't discuss and, and have uh, a really interesting conversation about. But at some point with that, we have to understand that certain things are very important. They're crucial to the yeah. faith and certain things are debatable. Right. And that's okay. We can debate about sure, those absolutely. things and still be Christians. Yeah. Right. And so and I think that's I'm wondering what he's talking about here with science with science, because there are plenty of scientists out there that are Christians and there are plenty that are not, obviously. Right. And you can listen to what both of them have to say and then you can test what they say. All the Christian scientists aren't wrong. All the other scientists aren't wrong. Well, like, so we're not talking where about are Christian we? scientists. We're talking scientists, about scientists who happen who to be Christian. Christian. Yeah, not, yeah. not yeah. the people who, you know, they shun No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. I'm not we're one We're okay of those guys. with yeah. the antihistamines right. here. It's allergy That's right. That's yeah, right, baby. And I, I think that that does illustrate that debates like this are not ultimately decided by the evidence. It's ultimately decided by what you bring to the evidence, which is what your worldview is. Right. And, and the, the, the amount of who, who you trust what you trust if your baseline trust is in the bible or if your baseline trust is in the world standards sure. that's going to make the difference yeah so yeah. specific evidence this is about the age of the earth i believe in a young earth but that's not something that is a decisive issue as far yeah. as like right, right. what i'm saying is like it's i i can't prove that to somebody who has decided to not believe that right just like i can't prove that the Bible is true to say. And but there are some things, and I do want to be clear, right? they never really bring this up. There are some things that can be proven that are undeniable by people across the spectrum. Yeah. And, and let me address yeah. this first. There's a lot of deferring to experts, right, that you see. Right. And you see this with yeah, a lot of Christians Without citing say, a whole lot. Well, yeah. you know, I read this book or I heard this person. And I understand there's a value in experts. I understand right. that. Right. Particularly, like, I am someone, if we know in this in this program, I always try to seek out the best. Whatever it is, yeah. whether it's, course, whether it's yeah. someone who's doing something technical on the editing side, yeah. whether it's someone for research, whether it's someone who's really good at actually finding and securing a location security like we really try and find the best folks so i believe me i understand the value um in particularly being advised by experts that being said you can't simply adopt the opinion of an expert because they're an expert and let me kind of explain it to you this way uh to bring it to something simple i've talked about this with brazilian jiu-jitsu or any kind of combat sports yeah. i've been doing it quite a long time and the reason i bring this up is if you play basketball not many people who play basketball you know at a, a i don't know a local park get to play with michael jordan Right, right. Yeah. right. Not many of you, even Charles Barkley, Scottie Pippen. The thing is, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I, I get to do that. Like, I've actually yeah. gotten to hit the mats with people like Marcelo Garcia, Bouchesha, these guys who are multiple-time world champions. The Michael Jordans of this sport either come in and do seminars, so you get to experience really, really brilliant people, the best that the yeah. world have to offer. Mm -hmm. And I have, uh, at some points, uh, performed certain techniques, and someone goes, well, don't do it that way. Do it this yeah. way. Yeah. I go, well, why would I do it that way? They say, well, just... Look at my medals. Do you trust me? There's, sometimes you have people that way. They're not very helpful. They go, look at my medals. This was a very specific instance where someone said, well, look at, trust me. I know. Do it this way. The very next tournament, this guy went out, who was a former world champion, got smoked by doing it the way I was doing it beforehand from another expert. Yeah. In other words, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. today's expert can be tomorrow's ignoramus because yeah, this absolutely. idea yeah. that, that scientific progress, you were talking about this, is linear. Yeah. Right. It's, it's not always. Right, yeah. Sometimes right. there's a double back. Yeah. It's, not, it's not a straight. Sometimes there's it's a, a 
loop. Yeah. Yeah. It's a loop to loop. Yeah, and, yeah. and Thomas, it's a Six Flags man. <laughs> Yeah, Thomas Kuhn talks about this in the structure of scientific revolutions. Yeah. It's essentially the, the myth of scientific progress is it's not some kind of hockey stick graph of like everybody was idiots for a long time. Yeah. And then now we have this explosion of technology. Really, there's every 50 or 100 years some new paradigm just because like an entirely new paradigm is taken on. I mean, a, one illustration of that is the coming ice age in the 1970s. Leonard and Nimoy now narrated it. And now it's global yeah. warming. Yeah. 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 I love Leonard Nimoy. No, it's climate change again because yeah. right. we're not so sure. Excuse me. It's warming. Yeah. Excuse None me. of us are scientists. <laughs> right. That's true. That's true. I just <laughs> yes, just as an illustration. Sounds like bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> feels, <laughs> feels, feels cool to me. Yeah, just an, as an illustration of the yes. whole idea of a paradigm shift, and that's what happens in science, just like any other discipline. It, it happens quite a bit. And by the way, yeah. these issues were argued by early Christians too. Yes. Keep in mind, yeah. this is important. Uh, which will bring which will bring us to our next clip. Yeah, which will bring us to our next clip here pretty soon, where they talk about how all societies have some kind of uh, moral good core. Well, not only is that not true, but guess what? Not all societies. Uh, have sought out knowledge mm. with the same importance. Mm. Okay, right. yeah. that's why you have people who had aqueducts. You have people who had used the wheel, and you yeah. had people who hadn't even domesticated horses here. When we're talking about Native <laughs> yeah. Americans, yes. because yeah. pantheism Oops. didn't encourage people yeah. didn't yeah. Encourage to go part. forward, be fruitful, <laughs> multiply, yeah. and to explore the questions of the universe. Yeah. Right. That's why yeah. the yeah. early early scientists were Christians. And I understand we can say that diff that's a different period in, in time. And now these people are actually trying to halt science. I understand right. some people might have those arguments out there, but there is no historical. There can be no historical denial of early scientists who were deeply Christian and yeah. philosophers, yeah. by the way, a lot of them. And I, there can be no historical argument about uh, the impact of the Bible, the impact of Jesus Christ. And yeah. for me, when we talk about history, the easiest thing, when you read the early, um, it sort of ant the early persecutors of Christians, this to me was the most convincing case because I had read a lot of sort of the Christian apologetics books. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get too, too, too into the details here, but what really convinced me was when I started reading the anti-Christian. Yeah writings of early Christian yeah. and they all accepted the idea that Jesus Christ was you can read these right now uh, you would probably know the names better than I are we talking Ta Tacitus Tacitus, Titus, yeah. Titus, uh, Tacitus. Trying, those are all back. those are names yes. those are names I don't know I don't know the actual <laughs> names off you the top of my head it's yeah. been a long time I haven't brushed up on this yeah. I probably should have um, <laughs> yeah. but uh, they all accepted that Jesus Christ was a person yeah they really had this great historical impact accounts. and there was this resurrection but here's why it doesn't matter that much the easiest thing to do would have been an early Christian to yeah. trot out Jesus' body. The easiest thing to do would have been like, well, yeah. actually, it's a hoax. There was no resurrection. The fact that people were arguing against this exploding faith, trying to quell it, yeah. Yeah. saying, all that happened, but this is why it doesn't matter to the degree that you think it matters, for me, was very convincing right. in tandem with the rest of the historical context um, and in tandem with archaeological discoveries that we've since yeah. had. I mean, a big one was the Kingdom of David. We've talked about this. Yeah. I think Rhett and Link say this in their thing as well. You know, the fact that there was no evidence yeah. of the Exodus, which right. is just, just yeah. inaccurate. It's not right. <laughs> not right. Yeah. But for yeah. the longest time up until I don't remember the year when they discovered the, the slab and then more evidence about the Kingdom of David, people yeah. often yeah. argued against yeah. the Bible and say, well, you know what? The biggest case is if we're going to talk about historical evidence, David, this crazy ruler of this king, there'd be something, and then there was. Yeah. yeah. And then they and then they've since sort like, of moved uh, on to the ark. Pivot. Yeah, so they because moved, you don't have yeah, the evidence pivot, right now, until, yeah. Yeah. doesn't mean that you won't find it eventually. And that's not proof positive that it means that it's real, but it it, it is something to keep in mind when you're making arguments that can be very temporary. Um, and I think that Rhett and Link do that quite a bit. And again, I say this out of love, but I just don't think. Um, the arguments that they make cut the mustard. This is another one that is very common. We see it among um, all sort of SJW woke leftists. Not saying that they are that, though then we have another clip to get to that, but this idea of sort of uh, situational ethics or moral relativism. Let's go to the clip. I think the point is, is I don't think you wake up and make decisions to be a good person because you've got this moral lawgiver there may be a moral lawgiver. I'm not saying that God doesn't exist. Yeah, where else does but it I, come from? But I think that it's yeah. a much more natural and organic process no. than there's a book, <laughs> I read it, and now I know what to do. I think that's why those core qualities of what makes a human good exist in cultures everywhere. You find a culture in the middle of the Amazon that's never been exposed to the gospel or any sort of religious system outside of what they believe. Are they gonna think that murdering is great? 
Probably not. Actually, they do exist. Some yes. Hammurabi, Hammurabi, or Hammurabi. You know Moses to tell them that. Well, you know what? You can also go down the base. Just just go down a few yeah. Amazon basin yeah. blocks, I guess. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, and you'll find tribesmen who are munching on some guy's testicles like it's a snack pack. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Human sacrifice. Chopping people's heads off. Just go to your Cancun break and between between booze cruise stops and go, yeah. go check out the Mayan ruins where they would kill small children. Yeah. Yeah. This idea that morality is universal. No, it's not. And and I can tell you that certainly for me, and I know this is an argument that you hear from people like Hitchens right. and Dawkins, well, then you're just a horrible person if you need God to tell you no. not to do those things. Well, hold on a second. I don't need God to tell me not to murder. Maybe I do, because I grew up in a modern Christian society, Western yeah, right. civilization, where we are told not to murder. And by the way, that's not the same everywhere. The same thing with theft, right? Or I grew up in a society that says, don't abuse women. Western civilization, we created domestic abuse laws. In Islam, in Islamic nations, they call that laughable, right? This is a difference. People have different beliefs. These come to different conclusions of morality. I need the Bible to tell me that I shouldn't be a philanderer. Right, because there are plenty of societies where you can sleep with as many people as you want. Right. You can be a polygamist. You can have, or in Islamic societies, where you can have child brides. Uh, the list goes, in your state of California, you think that it is stigmatizing for people to have to disclose their AIDS when they have sex with somebody. <laughs> Everywhere else in the country, we say that's a common courtesy. It's, so this yeah, yeah, idea yeah, yeah. that it's yeah. universal, no, you can't just take the extremes of murder. Right. You have to look at mercy. Yeah. There's no Al they didn't say Alexander the Merciful because that would be <laughs> Alexander the Pussy, right? <laughs> Mercy was not a value until yeah, modern yeah, Christendom. Yeah, exactly. It's still not a value in much of the third world or uh, non-Western civilizations. Yeah. It, it just shows me that, you know, to make a comment like that, I mean, it's very, it's wishful. Like you're hoping that you there hope is everybody good, has good throughout uh, cultures throughout history. And that's just not proven to be the case. No. Like if you study history at all, what you see is that left to our own devices, we're very evil and yeah. evil tends to manifest Red itself as kids. selfishness like you yeah, have kids you know kids that people are not yeah. inherently good yeah like, exactly. you have to teach them hey, some people do they think that everything look. the kid does is cute <laughs> right. it's like that's yeah. abusive oh, that's so look cute. right now right we have and so people would be like well this is this evil or not well it's selfish right everybody hears that there's a toilet paper shortage and they go and buy every single piece of freaking toilet paper they can find and they have two rooms full and their neighbor has none right yeah. that's the kind of condition humans tend to exist in We've only recently gotten to a place where yeah. we don't kill each other on sight, okay? Right. Yeah, Give right. us a minute. It's not goodness and culture throughout the world and throughout history at all. And you will right. find that out if you just do a cursory study. Well, I'm study. actually pretty glad because uh, I used to, you know, I was on YouTube back in 2006, and it was a sort of wave of atheists where they would, yeah. Yeah. you know, common yeah. thing, if God is real, why do all these horrible things happen to good people? Right. Why does he allow these things to happen? And then, of course, I don't need a God to tell me not to kill someone. Right. And these have been debunked since sort of the modern wave of people who all aren't over. even necessarily Christians, but Christian sympathists and sort of the new right, I guess, conservatives, libertarians, all these people who understand the value of Western civilization and how it was spawned by Christendom because yeah, these shared created. values have created what we know and love. And yeah. it's, it's, it's widely accepted. It's been debunked, this idea that morality yeah. is the same across cultures. So this is yeah. frankly very rudimentary, but I guess right. it works in California. Yeah, and, and, and technological advancement is something you were talking about earlier. And technological advancement is a moral good. It right. actually, it, like being resourceful, looking at the things around you and making things, making new stuff that makes people's yeah. lives better, right. that is a moral positive. So it's, it's, not, it's not like there's morality over here and scientific advancement over here. Right. Those things go together. So a society that has scientific advancement and moral advancement is a better society. Right. Yeah, no, I think absolutely. you're absolutely right. And I think that's how you end up getting backwards when you have things like communism or you have things like socialism. Yeah. Because now you've yeah, completed, right. well, hold on a second. We, we've separated economics and morality. Well, now let's bring morality into economics because the moral yeah. thing to do would be to redistribute this. Hold on a second. The problem with this is that you haven't applied, for example, from the get-go, a moral view or application to use mm -hmm. of money. Mm -hmm. The Bible yeah. is clear about that. The biblical application to money is, f first, don't steal it. But what if afterwards, I, no, 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 I don't care if you afterwards give it to the Salvation Army. You stole it first. <laughs> you can't right? do that. That's in kind of the, the top 10. Yeah. Right. Don't do that. Right. And that's how you realize or you avoid this idea of socialism. God, right. the original top 10. Into, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, exactly. Nice. But also they, they get rid of the, you know, socialism in countries that kind of work off of those systems. They yeah. get rid of individual value, which is, which is espoused throughout the Bible, right? Yeah. Right. Thou shalt not steal assumes that somebody has some Something that's not yours. It institutes personal property rights right personal there. Property, yeah. Thou yeah. shalt not kill. And by the way, something that's their that life many, and not yours. Something that many Native American tribes didn't have a, a concept nope. of. No, not now, at all. Now I'm not saying. Here's the thing. I'm not saying that that's right or wrong. 
I'm not saying the fact that uh, effectively Manhattan was purchased for uh, was a ship's uh, guild something guilders. I don't remember. It was the equivalent eh, to like seven thousand beaver pelts. Look, we weren't the nicest. I don't have the no. We weren't the no, nicest. But, that, but the whole that was thing a good was deal. they just said, they just thought a lot of these people. <laughs> these uh, um, I believe they were the Canarsies, if I'm not mistaken. Someone can fact check me. I don't have this in front of me. I believe they're like, well, yeah, we'll sell them this Manhattan. It's hard to get to. We have to get in the canoe to get there. Yeah. yeah. And plus, if they take it and then they're like, we miss it. We're just gonna we're just gonna take it back anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they didn't understand like no. <laughs> Were this is gay? a <laughs> sale. <laughs> All sales I, final. Pelt. Now, you may think one is right and one is wrong, but that shows you yeah. that this uh, this understanding of morality yeah. was not universal. The idea of personal property, that is something that, yeah. that Christians believe and individual in. individual human value. Ways. Right. right. That, that was the, the, the cornerstone of Christianity and, and, and really just the God of the Bible is that every individual is valuable yeah. and unique and has rights that are given to them by God, their creator. Right, and it's not it's not the whole that you're looking at. And As the cool thing is Stalinist collectivism. Exactly, but the cool thing is it doesn't it doesn't get rid of the need to care for the whole too. It also addresses sure. taking care of mm -hmm. the widows, the orphans, and and the poor. Right, and taking right. care of people that have been disenfranchised. Like it, it takes care of all of that, and they claim that it does not. So anyway, sorry, it was kind of a side point, yeah. but. I thought it was worth making. No, I think I think it's worth making as well. Um, is that, was, was there anything else that we had to hit there, Wade? Before well, not on that one. No. Okay, all right. I, and that's, this is where we kind of get to the uh, uh, <laughs> ultimate, <laughs> yeah. ultimate. And I, I will say this because and this now, is one thing too. That I think a lot of people out there. Hopefully, you know, we do this obviously mug club uh, behind the paywall for people who are paying members because there's more buying. This is difficult yeah. to have this yeah. conversation, and sometimes we'll do an ongoing series of Mass Mondays. Um, so use the promo code quarantine to get your very steep discount. Oh. Yes. But um, this is something that a lot of people may not understand who aren't Christians out there. I think that a lot of, of atheists think that Christians exist in this monolith. Like we're all, right, you know, right. the mom from Carrie where, <laughs> you know, we get the, we end up much, with the yeah. entire silverware drawer, yeah. drawer in our, in our uh, bosom by the end of the film. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, this has been creeping into the Christian church for a long time, oh, you know, yeah. the social justice sort of yeah, leftism. And that's because, unfortunately, they've been trying to water it down. And I don't mean necessarily water it down. Frankly, strip elements of the faith that are pretty important to make it palatable to yeah. places like California right. yeah. uh, so that people don't get hurt feelings, which is why if there's nothing else that you take from this, it is that your the experiential cannot trump understanding why you believe what it is that you believe. You need to have a reasoned basis in your faith. You need to understand scripture. You need to understand and be able to articulate and defend your beliefs or you have no business espousing them. Yeah. Um, so that being said, this is sort of indicative of, of what we've been talking about. This is, uh, it's not just Christian conservatives and SJW left. A huge portion of the church, I would wager probably most members of churches in Southern California, at the very least in my experience, are a part of that amalgamate of the social justice warrior left. Yeah. Um, Case and uh, just play it so I don't, it's gonna hurt. So many women and so many um, people who don't fit the mold. Women? <laughs> um, we talked about like the LGBTQ plus experience of, of, of people. How dare you plus? Um, in the church. <laughs> The, a lot of there's a lot of stories of trauma because as people were sort of developing their identity and self actualizing, self they were self doing it in an oppressive environment. I don't environment. know what that means. Yeah. And that's damaging. That's but again, California top. <laughs> because of who I am and what I look like, I pretty much just benefited. And so I don't look back at my experience with the church in a traumatic way. We've heard enough of the stories, right? To know that it's, it's a nightmare. It's much more of a nightmare than what we experienced, which was extreme privilege. Yeah. Um, we benefited. This is one of the things we talked about is we just benefited from the system. I mean, you know, look at the leadership in the evangelical church and it's very male, very white, and very straight. You so ever been to a black church? I'm gonna. Yeah, I went to an Ethiopian <laughs> church anybody, uh, uh, yeah, when I was in Los exist. Angeles, and I went to a church in Jamaica, Queens, where they actually came and canvassed for a local congressional right. candidate because uh. they don't really care about the 501c3c4. <laughs> yeah, they're not. They're not. Um, <laughs> Farrakhan, look it up. I am. Right. This is this is an yeah. exercise I will say to me in, in not insulting people because I obviously want. Right. I, there are a lot of insults that that yeah, I want to yeah, make, not sure. only about the but but the host with Philip, everyone. But I'm just going to yeah. try and be. As, they, yeah. This, oh, that's my my point is that's my baggage. That is your cross to bear right this minute. 
Um, <laughs> but how you doing with it? I mean, first off, the hairdos. Let me get okay. <laughs> and I, no, no, I'm not just saying. Like, I'm not just. I'm not saying it because he looks like a, a gay yeah. European soccer player bear. What right. I am saying right. is that if you look at, and this is so for people out there, please, please listen. The Christians out there, please don't be afraid to comment this and feel like you're letting them in. The other team settled. The truth is, the hairdos that they had when they started on YouTube were the exact yeah. hairdos that you would expect a youth pastor to have in that era. Yeah. That yes. kind of <laughs> Blink 182, but really you listen to MXPX so your parents don't get mad nice, and you have nice. the bangs and then all of a sudden it switches to now the uh, trimmed on the sides and high on the top in the middle <laughs> and then it'll probably switch to a verse like yeah. the original Terminator where the bangs will be really short and they'll have some of the yeah. mullet. The point is their <laughs> values in Silicon Valley and yeah. apparently from are just as cyclical as the styles. And yeah. if you look at the kind of content that comes from Rhett and Link where you can describe, and they describe it as brand friendly, you can describe the entire, uh, I guess, sort of mission statement of the content of Rhett and Link is brand friendly YouTube trend, uh, trend chasing. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah, what yeah. worked in YouTube yeah, in 2009, that's what they did. No. What do they think was gonna be working in YouTube in 2014? That's what they did. That's the style of video, that's the style they dress, that's how they try to appeal to people. Yeah. Um, milk toast, go along, get along. And, and, and that's what bothers me. And you see that a lot with, with people sometimes who are Christians where they change their values as often as their style. Yeah. That's the problem with yeah. being trendy. Yeah, and one of the things he said about traumatic experiences for a lot of people and that they didn't necessarily experience that same kind of issue because they were straight white men uh, in the church. Look, there, there are plenty. There, there's a lot that we have to own as Christians, right? And Because sometimes our brothers and sisters do and say things that we may very much disagree with. Inquisition. And, and we, yeah. <laughs> look, yeah. but, all right. You got to apologize. We were the primary <laughs> beneficiaries as well as victims. Yes. A lot of Christians yeah. killed in the Inquisition. A lot, a lot. So uh, what I would say is that, look, I understand that that happens. That does not change what truth is. Well, hold on. Before we get into yeah. I don't want to get into the sort of like Jordan Peterson, Sam Harris, like, what truth is? I want to get into the, the, the these are specifics. They say women. Yeah. Right. They say like, what? Like, yeah, like, like women like, aren't welcome at the church? <laughs> Do you know that women could claim sanctuary, by the way? Yeah. Uh, they were allowed to claim sanctuary for a long time. Women are very well treated at the church. Now, if you're True. saying, and this is something that's also important. Yeah. If you mean to say that it is offensive for a church to believe in traditionalist roles. If you believe that it is sexist to have expectations of women in the church, just as they have of men. In other words, they have expectations of accountability, of transparency from men in positions of leadership, right? They have small yeah. groups, they have a board of elders, and they expect women to also serve in the church. There yeah. are expectations of both men and women, and yeah, yeah that's, this is absolutely true. The Christian faith does not see men and women as fundamentally interchangeable. We do believe, going back to your point, that they are yeah. unique, intrinsically, fearfully and wonderfully yeah. created. And so we believe in complementarianism. I get that's offensive today, but it's not because we hate women. If right. you look at Jesus yeah. and his not preaching, yeah. the first feminist, the guy was hanging around with women. They didn't do that back then. Yeah. And they were included in a lot of things that they never would have been included in any other writings around the time. Like there, there's no way yeah. that they would have been featured in some of those things. And so yeah. um, one of the one of the points that I was going to make is, okay, well, let's let's take out hot button issues, right? Let's take out the, the feminist stuff. Let's take out the LGBTQ plus a, movement. I'm going to take issue. all of those. No, that's what he says, right? <laughs> those are the hot button, button issues. issues. Um, I, I'm going to take those out. You're a little firecracker. Let me, let me put, let me put it this way. If I walked into call the church, songs of Solomon. I'm going to oh, kill you. Oh, that's racy. That's spicy. Yeah, exactly. I tell you what, right? I will say this. His his wife is uh, spicy when she talks to them in front of us. I'm like, oh, oh no. we're still here. Yeah, <laughs> it happens. Um, that's why I just said that Christians have a great sex life. Yes, <laughs> yes yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. You and your wife are well matched. Yes, yes, exactly. Healthy drives. So let me let me put it. What if I what if I walked into a church? What if I walked into their church, like their ideal church? What the response? Uh, what would the response be if I said, well, look, guys, I'm just I'm a serial liar. Like I just right, I don't right. care about lying. I think it's okay to lie all the time, and and I really don't like. Are you going to confront me with truth? And this is where I was going. Are you going to confront me with truth and say, well, look, God says, not I believe. I believe is not a precise way of saying it because your beliefs can be wrong. God says is much more precise, and I can point to scripture. Yeah, lying yeah. is wrong. Yeah, it's not a. It's not me. You have a problem with. It's God if you disagree with that. And Wade That's has a, a good point. Thing. I want to get to yeah. that. But yeah. here's a perfect example of Gerald and I. And I know I give Gerald a, a tough time, but Gerald is someone I very much trust. He was a groomsman at my wedding. And we've we've talked about these issues quite a quite a bit. And I'm willing to bet substantially more than a dollar. Dang it. But okay. do you remember? <laughs> I don't want to let the guy. I think we've talked about this on air. Yeah. We were outside uh, at the patio outside of a Chili's. Yes. And you were talking about how at that point, I don't want to, can we talk about this? Yeah, we can talk about this. How you okay. were, you were, uh, you were, you were, you were, you were. I was <laughs> acting, I wasn't going, like, I was, I was you were, earlier in the dating. Uh, you know. Was, yeah, I was, well, no, 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 I'm not like sleeping around. That was not what was no, happening. No, 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 it wasn't but a whore. I was, I was confessing was, like, hey man, I'm having a problem. I'm not being the person that I want to be. And this is what's going on. And you're like, well, 
stop being a dick you know, or something. I, I can't remember I what said, you said. Oh, but. I said like I love you, and I think that uh, listen. You need to be consistent. If you you need to be consistent with yeah. your values, you know this is wrong. You know that you and I and I told you I wouldn't say this if you were an atheist because it wouldn't matter. No, but right, I know right, you're right. telling me this because it matters to you and because I yeah. love you. I think you need to live this way, or you're not going to find the woman that you want. Right. You're just going to find whores. Yeah. And, <laughs> And Unless that's now, what you're looking here's for. The thing. Like, yeah. Some Christians will get mad at <laughs> this show not. because they think that's naughty language. But that it's was pro- it worked. No, it, was it appropriate. Helped. You you confronted me you. with truth, right? And the, the wounds of the of a friend, right, essentially is what scripture talks about. Like you were right. very careful in how you did that, but you let me know based on who you've said you want to be, yeah. this doesn't line up. And by the way, this doesn't line up with what scripture says. Right. Like you need to understand that if you go down this path, that's not who you want to be and that's not who God has called you to be. If you can't correct in love, then there hasn't ever been a single loving parent who yeah. issued disciplinary action. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you, I, I wonder. Yeah, yeah. And, and he mentioned specifically like what I look like. So he talked about straight white male. So what I, I thought about gay, yeah. gay soccer player. Bun. Yeah, <laughs> the man bun in the back. Though he does look like that. That's so. not he at really home. It's just a joke. It's real. An observation, it's really. Real. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I really want to make an yeah. observation. So Philip DeFranco has gone in his entire life to the barber and said, "Give me the child number two. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> that one. So yeah, so he mentions whiteness. So as if yeah. there's some kind of hierarchy in Christianity. Right. Like I mean, yes, there For is white people. racism in uh, everywhere people who call themselves Christians. <laughs> but before Christianity, I mean, white people were sacrificing each other to trees. Yeah, this it's is, true. It's right. not it's some kind true. of inherent yeah. hierarchy in and Christianity. after Christianity, mind you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it does happen. And it enslaving <laughs> and enslaving other white people. Yes, like, yes. It, this, this was not. By <laughs> the way, black people also enslave black people. Yeah, non-Christians and Christians alike. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're Doesn't mean that it's necessarily Focus. consistent with their values yeah that's a no. very, right. it's this, this idea and again this idea that somehow you are less qualified to speak on an issue or that god expects you to shut up because of your skin color that is not biblical right. that is a california indoctrination yeah. yes. and it almost might as well be the book of southern california the book of the entertainment industry the book <laughs> yeah. of the woke left because yeah. it is dogmatic yeah. it is yeah. dogmatic yeah. when you yeah. tell yeah. people yes. that yes. race is race determines someone's identity more than their faith, which is what they are saying. It is bullshit. And for Christians who get mad that I say bullshit, Sorry. It matters more that we get through the bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, you gotta so the, clearly specify what is bullshit, what isn't. Yeah, yes. that's true. It is bu- to say that someone's. I cannot be. Cl- I, I want to make sure this is crystal clear. To imply that somebody's race, ethnicity, gender, or sexual orientation defines their identity more than their values yeah. is bullshit. Yeah, it absolutely is. <laughs> yeah. um, and, you know, and they're talking about like this loving experience, like these traumatic experiences kind of quickly going back to that. Um, if, if you know, uh, Penn and Teller, right? Who's the guy that talks of the two? I can't remember. I always forget. Is it Penn? Penn. 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 So Penn actually, you can YouTube this. He actually said, look, if you believe what you say you believe, Christians, like if God is real and there is a heaven and a hell, he goes, it'd be like somebody standing out in the middle of the highway and you seeing a truck coming at them and you don't warn well, he, them sorry, he, to get out context, of the way. He was saying when people sort of try and talk uh, to talk yeah, to him, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah he was saying him. I actually appreciate it. Exactly. He's this is a great atheist. Yeah. yeah. And, a very, great and a very kind atheist. Not, too. But not believe, yeah, exactly. He's saying so. So, so what is more loving if somebody who is gay or somebody who's a liar or somebody who that God has said, hey, this is sin comes and says, hey, these are the things that I do. Is it more loving to say, oh, God doesn't care? No, no, no. It's totally fine. Or is it to say, hey, let's talk about what God has called you to here. Yeah. Right. What's the yeah. more loving thing to do? And, and it, yeah. in culture, we think the more loving thing to do is just to accept everybody the way that they are right. and say that right. there is no truth for us to look at and say, well, what does God say? Yeah. Right. What does God say about how this will work best for all of us? Yeah, so it really does come down to who you trust. Do you trust the culture who says right. be yeah. nice to everybody or treat yeah. everybody and, and you know, be nice, at least with that kind of definition? Right. Or do you trust God? Right. Do, do you yeah. trust the experts with the, all the degrees or do you trust God? Right. Do you trust yeah. the culture that you're living in that might have some kind of particular milieu? It's, and their yeah. standards and are constantly way, shifting. I would even take that further right and the say, time. even if you don't believe, even if you don't believe in God, let's just take them as archetypes. Because a lot yeah. of times the yeah. left, they try to act as though there isn't some kind of an archetype. So let's just yeah. say, Jordan Peterson has talked about this. It was tough for me to understand yeah. if he really believes that Jesus is a, is a true person in, in God or if it's this even sort of you, uh, this take a terrible look at archetype. archetype. Let's, let's assume that you don't believe the, the, the Bible, <laughs> right? Literally, to shorten it right now. Um, Love you, the archetype of, yeah, of God. Well, the archetype of the left, what they are talking about now, what this, these people worship effectively in the entertainment industry, is the archetype of the perfect, woke, 
entirely enlightened, yeah. inoffensive social justice warrior leftist. That is the archetype. Yeah. The archetype is someone who uses all the right acronyms, who includes yeah. everybody, who supports diversity quotas uh, when really there should be some kind of a financial bailout to help with a, a, a growing virus pandemic. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. The archetype there is this is the perfect. This is the ideal. Mm. Even if you say that you don't believe in a God or you don't believe in any scripture, you still do have an idea as to what is right. Because if you mm. don't believe there is a right and wrong, that, that, then this doesn't apply to you. But if you believe that there's right and wrong at all, that does mean that somewhere down the line, if you question it long enough, there is an ideal. That's what's right. Yeah, yeah. and that, that's the thing that guides your life. And in this case, it's something that moves with culture. And that's not that you need an anchor to guide you. If you're yeah. going to have an archetype, make it something that does not change. Right. Right. And having it be the cultural whims of him, her, they, right. they be. Because culture, Z, like. Culture really? can suck. Culture yeah. Yeah. is transformative and it ruins people. Just look at 80s era David Bowie. I get that you like Labyrinth, but that crystallized him at the worst point in his yeah. career. Or Elvis in Vegas. I don't know why the Elvis impersonators go out with the stupid Vegas rhinestone suit. Elvis, when awesome. he was young, was the most beautiful man to have ever walked the face of the earth. I don't care who knows it. T-shirt and jeans, his hair slicked back. He did a few curls. He'd go around every there and talk man, about jailhouse yeah. rock. But for some yeah. reason, he's every a, Elvis a imitator star. decided to grow a pot belly and sunglasses, rhinestones, and a cape and impersonate him at the worst point in his career. <laughs> Culture can be the most corrosive yeah. facet uh, of humanity. That's true. All right. Very true. Uh, let's move on to the next yeah. clip, I guess. You're sort of in this whatever it is that we're that we are right now. I call myself a hopeful agnostic right now, but I don't I have, no have idea the structure or the community or the singular sort of well-defined purpose that I did. And that is, Crowder, that, that's quarantine. a problem. Listen, it's not like I got, I'm about to give you some philosophy that I live according to now that's got, that, gives, that, that gives me community purpose and meaning. I don't have that, okay? Um, I think there's a giant sort of shift that's happening culturally, and I think that we may be arriving at that sometime, but it doesn't exist right now for me. But what does exist is an openness, is this curiosity. Um, to what? I, I, yeah, I don't know. What, yeah. yeah. Does anyone want to take that? There, uh, to me, honestly, yeah, yeah, I don't I know it. anything other right. to say than that seems really sad. Yeah, right. it's very it's sad. Very I don't sad. have any answers. Yeah. Hopefully, I'll get it to uh, get to it. Yeah. I jumped into the yeah. water, took my wife and children. What he said yeah. earlier, yeah. Yeah. and I don't in. have any yeah. right. guiding yeah. philosophy. Well, his wife, his, ch his children, and his whole audience now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and does does he really think that what we're headed to in our culture is more unity? more purpose, right. more community. Like, yeah, it, it, we're in this huge shift culturally. We might be arriving at a replacement for the church. Yeah. Right. It, it, like a, the purpose, the guiding, everything. It's It, it really has shown that he CrossFit. has... CrossFit. Yeah, 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 I would hope. He's, yeah, he's shown that he's <laughs> yeah. essentially replaced an old thing with, with yeah. trying to build a new utopia, and that's his new religion. Right. Or at yeah. least hoping that somebody that's else That's also the danger it. of organized and plan centralized planning from a government, because yeah. yes. that's a big reason when you look at Stalinistic, when you look at, uh, com I'm saying Stalinist, but look, communism, you know I mean. right? Yeah. Communism yeah. is a yeah. distinctly Communism. atheist idea, because it's it the, this idea that the collective is more important than the individual. Right. Christianity, we do not believe that. You not may find some Christians who say they do, Sorry, they're incorrect. I don't have time to get into it right now. We're already 50 minutes in. Dead. Next episode. No, Your wrong. Honor, the defense is wrong. <laughs> okay, so they don't. How communism so does sure? not believe uh. in the power of the individual over the collective, and they believe that it is the government's job to centrally plan these yeah. communities so that people find purpose through what now? Nothing more than community, culture, and what the government has devised for them. And mm. that's why it was so important that they would shut down churches and mm. literally nail the doors shut. Yeah. When people yeah. say that religion has killed more people uh, than anything else throughout the history of mankind, that's first off, true. a lot of these religious wars were fought over territory. They were fought yeah. over all kinds of reasons where you right. happen to have people from different Defense. religious uh, right. worldviews on either side. But you would have to look at just the regimes in China and Russia and the hundreds of millions of people, it's not even close. Yeah, not yeah. even close. And, and this is one of the most sad things that he says to me because it's not like, I, I would. I think I would understand a little bit more uh, of his story if he says, I've looked into these 15 world religions. There, there are plenty of suitors for you to come. There's plenty of people that want you to come to their church of the now, right? Yeah. There's plenty of things that you can go out there and join Oprah's thing or you can join Levain whatever. Levain Satanists. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you got a lot of options. There are good times, you, the guy with the glass eye, he's a hoot. Yeah, you, I mean, <laughs> you're telling me that none guy. of those things, like you're a hopeful agnostic. What, what does that mean? Does that mean you're a lazy agnostic? Because if you're hopeful that somebody's going to bring the knowledge to yeah. you, you're never yeah. going to get anything, right? Yeah, so if right. you're just sitting there waiting for it to show up on your front porch from UPS, 
It's not going to happen. I don't know what that means, hopeful agnostic. Yeah, and it means you must hate your agnosticism. <laughs> right, it's like, well, I'm a hopeful yeah, yeah. conservative. Oh, meaning that you think, that, like, I'm hoping I become a liberal. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and where, does the, right. where does the hope come from? What right. is the hope for? Right. It, and he says at some point that he is going to follow truth wherever it leads. Well, how will he judge between what's true and what isn't true? Right, because he, he hasn't he, he's, a, done he's a good dropped job of that his so far. He's dropped his whole standard. He's got no he answer. doesn't have any objective standard. He just has his whims. Right. right. Uh, exactly. And so he said something that and resonates that's why it's so important. That's why me. I will say, yeah, and I want to go right go back. I want to yeah. go back to your point there. But that's why it's so important to get back to the idea of there's universal right and wrong. Yes. When we talk about yeah. the linchpin. Yes. That is Huge. it. And I love I, I love that that is so easy to discredit. And I love that so many people who are not Christians recognize the value of Western civilization right now. That's yeah. sort of been this awakening of Donald Trump and this populism. People who weren't Christians, but they go, you know what? I see the difference between us and the, the Islamic world. I see the difference between us and uh, even, even continents like Africa. And you see what yeah. goes on there. And the idea of Western, European, American civilization and our values, because values are not universal. And if you understand that, and if you are able to point out that moral relativism does not work, that there isn't a universal good, and we have to live in a society that agrees upon that, nothing else that Rhett and Link can possibly stand. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's it's why it's so important to say, well, why, why do you believe there's a universal right and wrong? Yeah. Mm. Poke those holes. Yeah, right. absolutely. And he said something earlier on in the video, like this just resonated with me. Right. You know, and that, that it's, it's not that that, that was a bad yeah. thing. It's not that a feeling. Didn't you say something about his frequency, thing. like resonated yeah. with yeah, my, yeah, I just like resonated Jesus with my resonated, frequency. Yeah. And I was like, that okay. movie with yeah. Dennis Quaid? <laughs> <laughs> not that one, thankfully. Different frequency. Um, was that the one with the shorts? Too? Shorts? That was Jaws 3. Dennis Quaid was always wearing shorts. He had nice scams. He does. Very nice. Crappy band, though. Let me just make a quick point about that. You're... Religion is not based on your feeling, right? Being a Christian, believing in God is not based on your feelings about this, right? right? It, it, it's really irrelevant, like your feelings, like, oh, it resonates or it doesn't resonate. Like truth cannot resonate sometimes with you because it's hard, because you don't necessarily want to change how selfish you've been to get around it, The right? first time I used a wet wipe, yeah, when I went to the bathroom, See? I realized that I had been so inconsiderate all this time. <laughs> to your underwear or to the person? Dry, doing your... wet, then dry again. There Words you go. to live by. <laughs> <laughs> but so I, I worked yeah. in a ministry and it was uh, the new believers basically. So if you raised your hand, you walked down, you said the prayer, we would we would have you come back to a room and we'd talk to you for a minute just to say, hey, like, hey, you know, great. We're, we're so excited for you. Um, but we would ask a question that would always become a very telling to me over time. How many of you... Is this your first time, you know, committing your life to Christ? And we would get probably 25% of the hands, 30% of the hands would go up. And that meant the rest of the room had made an emotional decision at some point. They right. felt yeah. a moment. They had the worship was great, the pastor was speaking the way that they wanted. Something inspired them to come down, and now they feel like they have to do it again. And then they feel like they have to do it again. And we started seeing frequent flyers and I'm like, man, and I'm not picking on those people. I'm not saying that it's not okay to like reaffirm your faith and say, you know what? I have been wondering and I want to come back and really get back into this because I've, I've been doing the wrong thing. I'm saying that people think that it's this feeling. They're missing it. Like if you, once you get introduced to Jesus and ask him into your heart, that's done. Like you don't have to be reintroduced. Right. You know what I mean? You don't have to recommit your life to right. Christ. You've done that already. You just have to stop acting like a fool. Right. Right. Come back and then receive forgiveness. Repent. Your, then it comes down to your actions that define you. Yeah. Just like when you mm -hmm. fall in love with someone. Listen, it, this is something that a lot of women don't like to hear. At some point, every man who loves you more than, more than the earth itself is going to fall out of that feeling of love with you. If only temporarily, it happens. There are times when you get into a fight, when you get into a fight with your wife or your husband, that's why the Bible is prescriptive and it's approach yes. to love being yeah. an action. Yes. It talks Stay about together. the feeling of love, which is a thing, <laughs> right? This is, and we can, we can scientifically sort of observe that where you can talk about neurotransmitters and dopamine and all this stuff going on, fine. But that, because that is temporary, because that is fleeting, the Christian worldview of love is that of an action. And mm. that is why we are against divorce. Whereas in Islam, a man can say telek, telek, telek three times and he's divorced and the woman has no recourse. That's true. That's yes. why you have a lot of not without my daughter and abducted uh, Islamic children go. because Terrible. the man has the rights and the women do not. Yeah. Yeah. We don't believe in love as yeah. a feeling. We believe yeah. in love as an initial feeling yeah. and then an action. And the same right. thing should be right. your faith. Because I think, I, I, honestly, I've had maybe two times in my life a deeply spiritual experience. Ever, yeah, yeah, on an emotional yeah, level, yeah. twice. And one of them was very recent. They're formative. Right? Um, and the rest has, has been a battle of the mind. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of, and there are some Christians out there who may, you may not struggle with that. Some Christians, they, you know, they have that, that faith of a child and that's, that nothing can tear you away from God's hand. And that's beautiful and it's wonderful, but that's not, that's not most of us. And yeah. that's okay because 
the battle taking place in your mind, that is expected. That's why we have the scripture. Yeah. That's why the Bible talks about doubts. That's why the Bible talks about faith. That's why the di- Bible is prescriptive in how you should approach your marriage, how you should approach your finances, how you should approach your business, all of these things, because yeah. it understands that we are human beings who live in a very physical world. Yeah. with tangible yeah. decisions that have to be made. Um, all right, we have. did you have something else you wanted to say? I was just you know? going to say that, it, and that's why it's important to have a baseline level of trust. Through yes. all of the doubts, through all of the confusion and things like that, having a baseline trust in God, even through the questions, is, right. is the only way and, to go. And questions yes. are Otherwise, encouraged in the Bible. Acts 17, 11 actually makes a point that like these guys are better than these guys, right? I'll let you go read it. But the Bereans basically better than the Thessalonians saying these guys heard it and received the word. They were ready for it. And that's tough to be ready for in the first place. Mm-hmm. But then they searched scripture to see if it was true. That's They were lauded for that. Like, go out and question and yeah. see if this is true based on what scripture says. Go and test this, right? God, you're right, says don't, don't test me in some of these ways. But he does say test me in this, test me in tithing. Right, that's very easy. And search the scriptures to see if what you're hearing is true, if what the culture says is true, or what your priest says mm-hmm. is true. My goodness, sometimes people can be wrong. It's not saying don't trust anybody, but it's saying, yeah. hey, receive it. Trust it, but then go and make sure that it lines up with what I have told you is true. And by the way, for those of, of you out there maybe listening and saying, man, that seems like a really high bar, not to like this feeling of love, and sometimes you're not going to love. God made it very clear that that's exactly what he did for us, right? He said that Christ died while you were yet sinners. In there action. was nothing yeah. about you that was need like that I should like and want to redeem. Like your actions weren't warranting any of that. To put it in context, that. you're getting a little grandiose, Sorry. but you're correct. To put it in context, <laughs> walk into your nearest Jack in the Box or Waffle House, wherever assholes hang out. <laughs> pick the worst, <laughs> and pick the worst representative <laughs> of. The said clientele, of course, yes. said Jack in the Box yes. or Waffle House. Would you be willing to be kicked in the nuts for that guy? Right. Could be a girl. Probably a guy. Probably a guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's just be honest. That's what Christ did for you, only he was killed. Yeah. Yeah. He knew the worst Jack in the Box customer <laughs> that ever existed. And the still worst said, person of Walmart. I'm going yeah. to be crucified for that guy. Yeah. That's pretty tough to do. Before they, before, exactly. And that matters a whole lot yeah. more than somebody using the proper pronouns in California. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, you can. it's not the same level of suffering, <laughs> especially when you know yeah. Aaron at Jack in the Box. Screw that guy. Don't like that guy. Last he likes clip. the tacos. He does. Ugh. It's too late for Rhett and Link, mostly because of this LGBT thing. Once they've gone uh, there, wow. it's too late for them. And I'm like, can't you see that you guys have lost this argument? History no. is going to leave you behind. The awesome. thing that we're finding oh. out right now, and it's one of the key reasons that so many people are leaving the church, is that that tension can only lead to the tension being broken. Mm-hmm. You know, And I think the way it's going to be broken Damn. is that and just like I said earlier, in many different issues that the church no. has held out on, uh, I mean, even the most conservative true. denominations a hundred years from now, no, no one except these, uh, like a fringe cult is going to be anti-LGBT in a hundred years. It's just, if you just look at history and the way things progress culturally, eventually the church says, okay, we'll incorporate that too, because if we don't, we're going to die. Um, really? But I think because the church is being really slow to do that and it's kind of causing an existential crisis and a crisis of just the way that they see the Bible, mm-hmm. the young people are just saying, I'm, I'm out. I, I'm not going to be a part of this. Okay, so a couple of points here. It's very clear that the hang-up is the LGBT thing yes. for them. Yes, it, it is. And that's based, again, on a false premise that if you are a Christian that you can't hug Michael Buckley, that you have Apparently. to hate. That's right. Yeah. By the way, back then yeah. it was still probably LGB. But you have to hate LGBT. <laughs> the good old days. That's not true. As a matter of fact, it's the opposite of yes. how our faith informs right. us. You are, of course, supposed to love them. And you can have disagreements with people and we can talk about sin, yeah. which they try and cut off at the past too and say, love the sinner, hate the sin. That's a really silly statement. I also have a problem with his, uh, his analogy there about there's nothing that can happen to the tension other than break. That's not, you ever hear of a pulley? <laughs> yeah, that's not true. You're using the tension to pull up the bucket. I saw Swiss Family Robinson. Um, <laughs> it's just not right. The idea that He's the only thing that can happen too. is tension like, break. And by the way, this is a danger when you talk about there's this mass exodus. I don't have the sources in front of me, but actually in the United States, there's, there's actually kind of a resurgence of Christendom with a lot yeah. of young people. But for sure, beyond any shadow of a doubt, uh, uh, what, what was her name? The uh, lesbian who was just on the show? Ariel Scarcella. Ariel Scarcella yeah. brought this up, and I think we have an overlay from uh, USA Today that for the first time in several decades, the young uh, young Americans, they have a more negative yep. view of the LGBTQ community than people who've come before them. So those yeah. tides are turning. So you don't want all of your all of your fundamental principles to rest on everyone else is doing it. 
Yeah. yeah. Because guess what? Right. That can change. And unfortunately for you, it's actually changing right now where there's an existential crisis for lesbians on yeah. the left. Yeah. Lesbians are getting aggravated with lesbians. Yeah. Just like, by the way, this could have been used at one point to convert people to Christianity. Certainly was used to, to convert people to Islam by force as opposed to word of mouth was everybody else is doing it. With Islam, it was everybody else is doing it or they were sharpening yeah. it, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, 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 it what doesn't other... mean that it's right. That's one of the most exactly. common right. logical yeah. fallacies there is. What other... So so I, I'm just, I'm baffled by this. If this is the, the crux, like in a hundred years, none of these churches are going to say, oh, we'll just incorporate. How, how do you incorporate it without changing the word of God in several clearly right. defined, yes. like what pages are you going to rip out of your new Bible? Because you can't leave Romans in, you can't leave Leviticus in, you can't leave other parts of the Bible in that are very, very this clear. Is, they really want that to change in the church. And this is something that I've talked about. And Dave Rudin was surprised when I said, oh, I don't support gay marriage. Yeah. I said I support gay civil union. I think that church churches should be involved in marriage. I don't think the federal government should be involved in marriage. Right. Um, is there another clip I'm seeing on there? What is that? I don't know nope. what that means. Okay. Nah, I, think uh, I said I don't think so. David Rubin was surprised. Yeah. And I was saying because I don't believe that men and women are fundamentally interchangeable. This was before the whole T yeah. part was sort of tagged on, right? And I don't remember the point. You were saying something, and then I saw this thing. Well, you did see it. It kind of distracted you a little bit. Yeah. But I, I, so it, the assumption is that that sin means that you can't be cordial to somebody, you can't love somebody, right. you can't incorporate, you can't say, look, I understand, you have a right to go be a sinner. Right. God God gave you the freedom to choose to not pick him. Oh, and that's I okay. That point now. Right? So they're saying that at some point we're just going to say, well, this is the hot button. I said it again. Dead gum. This is the issue of today, right? The LGBT. What's wrong this with is hot the button? issue. Uh, because you're going to go back and do it again. You're going to call me the, the Solomon thing, whatever it was. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> Song of Solomon. Yes, you do. Yeah. How dare you? Song of Solomon. Yeah, I should have just kept going. Uh, <laughs> but this is the, what, what is the next one? We're just going to pick another part of the Bible and say, yeah. well, we don't really agree with that. And like, then at that we point, become, what do you believe? It, well, right. it, here's yeah. what they believe. This is what it comes down to. We become our own gods. Right. right. It's, Selfish. it's up to us. Whatever yeah. we choose to do. Get away from me. Yeah. Get, get, a, get away from me. <laughs> oh, get, a, get away. Get away. <laughs> get thee behind me, Satan. All right. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, it really is. That's that's essentially what it comes down to. Hero. I, I appreciate it. Give me something hotter. Ghost pepper. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna what, what are the hottest? Hybridized Jalokia ghost, ghost, nice. ghost pepper. Oh, nice. Hydrogenated ghost pepper. Can we no. figure out how to do that one? No, hybridized. <laughs> but no, the point I was making is when they say this about the gay, about the LGBTQ thing is because they've desperately tried to thrust that upon the church. And this yeah. is what I was yeah. talking about with Dave Rubin. I right. said, you had this in Canada where if a pastor says, I'm not going to marry two guys, Stephen Boisson was one of the pastors in Canada, you can be jailed. Now, that being said, people haven't really argued before because men now cohabitate men and women like they live together before they're married that's yeah. relatively new when you take into consideration sort of shacking up western civil yeah shacking up yeah. um which always by the way shocks me when someone calls into dr laura and like i'm living with my boyfriend I'm like oh, i did not know what dr laura was gonna say <laughs> um and so but they've never Society changed, but they never really tried to thrust that upon the church. Right. It's like, well, people are living together and you don't do it, you're traditionalists. But the same sex marriage thing was something they tried to thrust upon the church because exactly. of this worldview that men and women are fundamentally different. And I'm not talking about the entire gay community. I'm talking about those who no. are the sort of gay Stapo, uh, <laughs> yeah, LGBTQ yeah. Nazis, who, by the way, now aggravate lesbians and gay people right. on the left who just want to live and let live. And that's why they've really tried to thrust it into the church because. It pulls at the thread of the idea. If they can, they can get yeah. a foothold saying, well, no, hold on a second. It's actually hate speech to say that men and women are different right. and that a man and a man is not the same in the eyes of God as a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. But the church needs to stand strong and yeah. say, well, in the church, it's not. Yeah. The well, state and, can say sure, but yeah. the church doesn't. Yeah. And, and, and Christians should recognize that there's a play being run on them. And that's the, yeah, exactly. the play. The play is niceness. The right. play is they're, they're taking advantage of our, our willingness to sort of go, okay, yeah, that's fine, and just keep retreating, and they're using that, again, to yeah. gain the upper hand in the culture. Yeah. So that so the, the, so the, the left-wing, like you said, the sort of totalitarian-minded people have this inherent impulse, and that's to try to keep people down. I love you said, you said they're, they're what? They're running a game, is that you said? Yeah. Running a play. Uh, is running what a, running a play. Yeah. Yeah. Shame on a YouTuber who try to run a game. On a <laughs> crack, crack, uh, with the trick. That's what there, I was thinking. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> His entire yeah. point. I didn't just lost. It was wah, 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 I was wah, trying to think yeah, of how I could sing that song <laughs> yeah. without using the N word because I've hard. done it in my car with the windows rolled up at least a thousand times. It's hard. It's hard. I saw it in your it's eyes cool. that you checked yeah. out, but it's fine. We're oh, yeah. good. I think they glazed over. I just ruined my career and I can believe it. But shame on the who tried to run game on. That's just like, what are you going to say? You know, if ever I'm put in a deposition yeah, like Paula Dean, have you ever used the N word? Yes. I'm just like, I'm a huge hip hop fan. Yeah. And I sing in the, and I have a Bluetooth speaker in the shower. It's Sorry. an admiration thing. It's, it is. <laughs> It is. It's cultural. That's a wonderful way to, on that note, cultural. <laughs> <laughs> Come on.
What am I, what am I, like, have I, yeah, have I in, ever in to quit? Does context matter? Because I'm an NWA fan. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, in the name. Yeah. What are you supposed to do? What do you, what, what have you, uh, do you want to go through the list of mortal yeah. technique? Do you want me to, I mean, what, what, what? Do you yeah. want me to go through albums with you? Yeah. Um, I think, so, I, you know what, listen, we've been going, yeah. and let, let us know again. I want to hear yeah. your comments, people, whether you're a Christian, whether you're not. This is the kind of stuff that's available on Mod Club. Tomorrow, we will have, um, I think, more of a standard, yeah, standard show like you've yeah, come to know on yeah. Thursday. Um, sometimes we do a scrapyard where we take all Ooh. of the crap that was too offensive to make a show. Can you imagine mm. shoving a show anyway? It's too offensive and, to get onto this and show. And the reason we do it is because the car, often the photoshops are too offensive, so we yeah. just have Smooth Manny from Columbia just do them as cartoons. <laughs> figure that takes the edge yeah, off. It does. So it that'll really be tomorrow with a guest, a show that you've come to know and expect. <laughs> and of course, Morning Drive, uh, Good Morning Mug Club. Uh, check yeah, the schedule yeah, yeah. available at lattlescredit.com. I think what's most important here is first off, I would I would gladly host uh, Rhett, Link, Philip yep. DeFranco. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just want to this doesn't come from, none of this comes from a place oh, of, of uh, hate. It comes from no. a place of love and wanting what's best for people. And listen, I, I would be remiss if I didn't tell people that, yeah, I think what is best for everybody, man, woman, child, gay, straight, is to have a personal relationship with God. And when I, Laura, I call him good guy God, Jesus. Um, <laughs> I think that matters. And yeah. I will tell you this, when people say, what, I just do it because God told me to? No, not always. But if anyone here, maybe you don't need to, but I certainly would acknowledge that in my moments of weakness that I've had, where particularly as someone who struggled with depression, understanding, that is, that is a safeguard. That is a guardrail of, you know what? Actually, I was designed for a purpose. Yeah. And I do think, and I have known a lot of Christians who've also struggled with suicidal thoughts or tendencies and thought, you know what, hold on a second, I don't have the right to do that because this really isn't my body. Hmm. So it may not be of value to you in Southern California, but it is to a lot of people. And I think that particularly for me in moments of weakness where maybe I don't have the answer, having that trust yeah. that, okay, this is, you know what? I don't necessarily know each Action, each individual step, but I do know the prescription for what I need to do to achieve what is morally right. And I look at scripture and that helps me make decisions when sometimes decisions are tough to make. The only way though that this faith um, can stand, and I think we can talk about this, this happens by the way, also with Christians who are just, like you said, running a game, the mm -hmm. nice Christians yeah. 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 who are open to all. I mean, as someone said this, this is not my own original quote. I don't know who said it, so please don't get mad at me for not attributing this to you. They say, listen, you cannot continually water down um, the message of, of, of Christ and the value, you can't continually water down the medicine and then be shocked when it doesn't work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. When someone turns Absolutely. to it for answers and they don't have them. And so everyone out there, even if you've grown up as a Christian your whole life, um, and I know people say grow up, you always have to choose to follow Christ. No one of really course. just is, yeah. no one is just raised Christian. You can be raised in that culturally, but culturally you choose Christian. to make a yeah, decision. Exactly. Every single person does. But even if you've been raised with that and you've never had a crisis of faith, you need to have it be based on reason. You need to be able to reason your faith. You need to understand intellectually why it is that you believe what you believe and you need to be able to defend it. I don't mean go out and argue with everyone because you're always going to find someone who's more qualified than you to argue. Uh, but it has to be more than an emotion. Otherwise, you just become a byproduct of your environment, and then you find yourself um, subjected to the whims of moral relevancy. And I don't think you're gonna like the way that one ends up. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys very much. The uh, promo code, of course, is quarantine to get your steep discount. We will be back with you tomorrow with a normal uh, show, show you've come to love. Hope you enjoyed Mass Monday. Let us know. Yeah.